I'll invite our first speaker for today, Dr. Najib Nematullah. He did his MBBS from Dow Medical College in 1989. He is a diplomat of American Board of Internal Medicine, Medical Oncology, and Hematology. Currently, he is working as a consultant, hematologist, and oncologist at Sin Institute of Urology and Transplantation and Shokat Khanna Memorial Cancer Hospital and Research Center. He is also an honorary faculty member at Dow University of Health Sciences. Sir. Thank you very much, Dr. Sidra, and Bismillah Rahman Rahim. I would like to uh, thank the organizers for inviting me and giving me opportunity to discuss this important topic. So topic for today is uh, the role of adjuvant chemotherapy in stage two colon cancer. As you all know that uh, it's a th third most common tumor globally, colon colorectal cancer. And it uh, accounts for almost uh, 600,000 deaths in the world annually. According to Globocan uh, 2020, uh, colorectal cancer is fifth leading cause of cancer in Pakistan. We have different cancer registries in Pakistan, like in Aga Khan and in Shaukat Khanum, but we don't have a proper whole Pakistan registry. So I don't know how much um, this data is verifiable. Okay, I'd like to start with a case and then base uh, my talk on this case. Uh, this is a typical stage two colon cancer case, 55 year old man with no comorbids present with a bleeding per rectum, with no family history of colon cancer. He underwent colonoscopy found to have a ascending colon mass and the biopsy showed adenocarcinoma. And the staging workup was negative for metastasis. Oh, Pre-op CEA was no normal one. Here I want to show you just a couple of things. One is a pointer knee. Anyhow, uh, the two important thing is one is we need CT scan. One important thing is that we need to do a CT scan, chest abdomen, pelvis for staging, and there is no role of PET CT scan. PET scan we only do in those patients for uh, staging in which there is any abnormality on CT scan, which is questionable, and we want to further investigate that in order to decide whether this is uh, related to malignancy or not, and if the patient has a curative modality available. If the patient has, not cur has no curative modality available, then there is no point in doing a PET scan and looking for the disease. So PET is not uh, a necessary test in staging of the colorectal cancer. Okay, the patient underwent right hemicolectomy and we used to see these report, the kinds of reports that right hemicolectomy specimen infiltrating adenocarcinoma, invading through the muscularis mucosa into the serosa, proximal and distal margins negative for tumor, circumferential margin 0.2 centimeter, and none of the lymph nodes show tumor metastasis. This report shows that the patient has stage two colon cancer, but there are a lot of things which are missing. What things we are missing? It's T3 and zero, no doubt, but for T3, there is T3, T3, 4A. Stage 3 is T3, T4, A, and T4, B. Means if the tumor invades beyond muscularis mucosa of uh, colon, then it's T3. And if it's involving the visceral peritoneum or invading the adjacent organ, it's T4. So these three tumors comprises of stage 2 colon cancer if the lymph nodes are negative. So the missing points are in examination, initial examination pre-op, in CT scan, 
prior, which was done prior, and a peroperative signs of bowel obstruction or perforation. So these th three things we need to know for decision of adjuvant chemotherapy. So we need a good CT scan and operative notes also to find out what were the operative findings of the tumor in order to decide whether the patient needs chemotherapy or not. In histopathology report, we need tumor grade, perineural and lymphovascular invasion, margin clearance, perforation, and number of nodes involved. So a good pathology report is like that, that it has all the information needed for to decide about the further treatment in adjuvant setting. So if you look at the treatment of colon cancer, for stage one, it's very easy that there's no need for any adjuvant treatment and the patient is, can be put on surveillance. The only treatment is surgery. For stage three, it's chemotherapy, or surgery followed by chemotherapy. There's no uh, two question. The problem is in stage two, where the treatment is surgery with or without chemotherapy. So we, do, we have to decide which patients need chemotherapy. If you look at the NCC guidelines for adjuvant treatment, more than half of the page of adju uh, adjuvant treatment is for stage two. There's only one line for stage one and two lines for stage three. In stage two, we have, you should know whether the patient has uh, microsatellite instability or not, whether the patient has high risk features or not, all these things will help us in deciding the uh, adjuvant treatment. And in, on that basis, we divide the patient into a good risk and a poor risk. And if the patient has good risk, they have good uh, survival, and the patient have poor risk, then patient have poor prognosis, and these are the patients who need adjuvant treatment. So this is the population of patients who have stage two colon cancer, and some of them need treatment with therapy and some of them need wait and watch because they have a good prognosis. So the goal for today is to find out whether we can differentiate these patients. So first of the all, we do some basic work like age of the patient, the patient is more than 70 years of age, or if the patient has a poor performance status, usually we don't give chemotherapy and chemotherapy. If the patient has comorbidities, especially coronary artery disease, then the backbone of our treatment is five uh, fluoropyridines or 5-FU based. And 5-FU is notorious to cause uh, coronary, uh, coronary artery disease, so it means that can cause uh, ischem increased ischemia. So we have to rule out any history of coronary artery disease. Then patient life expectancy, uh, potential risk of complications because all these chemotherapies are not benign. They have a lot of complications and there's a chance of 0.5 to 1% morbidity or mortality actually in patients with colon cancer if we treat them with uh, chemotherapy. Okay, this is MSI or DMMR status. MSI is basically in uh, uh, HNPCC or Lynch syndrome. There is a mutation in the group of genes that are called uh, MMR gene. And that comprises of MSH2, MLH1, PSM, PMS2, and MSH6. These are the four genes, and sometimes they take EPCM. If there is any mutation or loss of the one or, or more of these uh, genes, then we say that these patients have microsatellite instability. And these patients are more prone to develop cancer. And this is checked by either PCR or ISC. So 20% of the patient with stage two cancer have microsatellite instability or uh, deficient uh, mismatch repair status. Usually they are young with higher T stage and lower nodal stage. Right-sided tumors are more common to have this abnormality and these tumors are usually high-grade tumors. And the, it's a most reliable prognostic marker in deciding the treatment of management of stage two disease. So in untreated stage two disease with uh, 
microsatellite instability. They have an excellent prognosis compared with those who have uh, stable disease, stable or uh, proficient my, uh, mismatch repair status. Stage 2A, which means T3 disease, have a prognosis of means survival of more than 95%. And actually, they can have a harmful effect if they are treated with 5-FU based chemotherapy. And for patients with uh, MMR, uh, deficient MMR, stage 2B or 3C disease, we have to give oxaliplatin, oxaliplatin with 5-FU because only 5-FU will be detrimental. So sometime with the stage 3 disease, we give only capecitabine or 5-FU, but in stage 2 disease with high MSI, we usually give oxaliplatin with this uh, 5-FU. Okay, M other major prognostic factors are inadequate nodal sampling. This is the one of the most important prognostic factor. Um, 12 nodes are very important. You have to take out 12 or more nodes and that depends on the surgeon. If the patient has less than 12 nodes, then the chances of having node positivity will increase depending on the number of nodes. So if you ask surgeon why the nodes are low, then they will say that it's a problem with the histopathologists and histopathologists, they, they, they can't see any more lymph nodes. So a good surgery and a good histopathology report will give us a proper uh, nodal status, which will give us proper uh, prognostic value. The second thing is T4 disease. Actually, stage 2, P and 2C, that means T4 disease, T4 N0, has a less uh, overall survival as compared to stage 3A disease, means T3 N1 disease. So even that stage is 3, uh, three but the prognosis is better as compared to T4 disease. The other high risk factors are lymphoproliferative invasion, perineural invasion, clinical obstruction, bowel perforation, poorly differentiated histology, and positive margin after surgery. There are few molecular profile of predictive variables like uh, oncotype DX colon. Those who do breast surgery, uh, they know that oncotype DX in breast is uh, very important in those patients who have uh, ERPI positive HER2 negative disease, and we decide in node positive patient, uh, patients whether we have we say low risk disease or high risk disease, and we give chemotherapy according to that. So same thing in colon cancer, oncotype DX colon or coloprint or Calx. These are the molecular profile, but they are still in experiment, uh, and we probably in the future we might be able to use these uh, tests to decide whether the patient needs chemotherapy or not. Okay, circulating tumor DNA basically is the DNA uh, released by the tumor cells in the circulation after surgery. And the lower the circulating uh, tumor DNA, the lesser is the chance of developing colon cancer. So on the basis of circulating uh, tumor DNA amount, we can decide whether the patient is a low risk or high risk disease and again, same is with the immunoscore. Uh, quantities of infiltration of CD3 and CD8 T cells in the tumor can tell us the immune system of the body, the immune reaction uh, from the body on the tumor cells. And if the patient has good immune system, good immune reaction, then the chances of developing the cancer, means recurrence of the cancer are low. So these two tests, immunoscore and uh, uh, CTDNA, these are probably the future a test to decide whether the patient has a low risk disease or a high risk disease. These are the relevant studies which, uh, which were done in stage 2 colon cancer to decide about chemotherapy and if you look at these uh, studies, they all include stage 2 and stage 3 disease. So we don't have a specific data of stage 2 disease, we decide on the basis of stage 3 disease whether to give treatment on stage 2 or not. So if you look at the algorithm, basically in stage 2 colon cancer, the patient is fit for uh, chemotherapy. 
you see whether the patient has a T3 or T4 disease or uh, whether it's a MMR uh, uh, deficient or not. And if the patient has microsatellite stability, stable disease, then we give chemotherapy. If the patient has microsatellite instable disease, then we give chemotherapy in T3, uh, T4 disease, not in T3 disease, especially if the patient has high risk factors. In surveillance, we do uh, CEA every three to six months for five years, CT scan yearly for three to five years, and colonoscopy after one year, three years, and every five years thereafter. So in summary, the role of adjuvant chemotherapy remains controversial because of the heterogeneous nature of the disease. Not all patients with stage two tumor sh should receive adjuvant chemotherapy. The identification of prognostic factor might help in distinguishing patients with high-risk disease and, eat and we can give chemotherapy effect to develop molecular profile of predictive variables that could potentially guide adjuvant therapy decision in stage two disease have not proved useful clinically yet. The role of adjuvant therapy in stage two colon cancer should involve risk stratification and shared decision, decision making with the patient. And the important, mo most important thing is all patients of cancer should be discussed in a multidisciplinary tumor board meeting and that is very helpful for the patient. Thank you very much. Questions and my Okay. Thank you. for doing everything in time, mashallah, as always. Uh, our second speaker uh, for